Do you love chicken parmesan? Well, you gotta check out my next video where we're featuring a breaded chicken cutlet with melted provolone cheese, garden fresh basil, and tomato sauce served over angel hair pasta. Coming up on my next lesson, cooking class for the working class, culinary 101. Hey there, I'm Chef John, and I'm a real life working professional chef. And this is Cooking Class for the Working Class, Culinary 101. Hey everybody, it's Chef John here. Welcome back to another edition of Cooking Class for the Working Class, Culinary 101. Today we're going to be doing a real simple dish. It's a breaded chicken cutlet, and we're going to turn that into a chicken parmesan. It's going to be served over angel hair pasta with a fresh basil tomato sauce. And the basil, I was fortunate enough to be able to go outside and pick it from my wife's garden in the backyard. So this is going to be a quick, easy, and fun way to learn how to cook chicken parmesan. So without any further ado, let's get cooking. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is to get our mise en place together for the dish. And today we're going to be using some fresh basil from the garden, which I just picked outside. And also, we're going to be using some fresh tomatoes, a little bit of chicken stock, of course the chicken breast. And I've got some Italian style panko breadcrumbs. I love using these because these are a coarse ground, it's like a toasted white bread, but these are with Italian seasoning so it gets that full flavor effect. And I always use a seasoned flour. This is a little bit of uh, chicken bread and all-purpose flour mixed together with salt, pepper, and granulated garlic. And of course, some angel hair pasta. All right, let's get rolling. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is gonna get our fresh basil ready. And all I'm gonna do is take and try to pluck the leaves off of the stem here. Um, and parts of the stem can tend to be a little bit on the bitter side. Although, uh, some people just chop the whole thing up, especially if you're making it, you're going to blend it into a dressing or something for that effect. Alright, so I've got my basil leaves. I'm going to take the larger ones out. I'm going to show you a couple different tricks here. Alright. So when you take fresh basil and the leaves, and you roll them up, okay, alright, roll up, and you're going to take your knife after you roll it and just very as thin as you possibly can, shave those. This is called a, a chiffonade of basil. Alright, if you look at that, see how that's nice? It's almost like little tiny strings of fresh basil. Flavor profile, over the moon. Okay, now these I'm just going to chop, just for the sake of showing you how to chop. And depending on what you're making, if you're making a tomato sauce, like a big batch of marinara, you might want to cut these a little larger, all right? I like to cut them uh, about medium, about a medium chop. But I do like to see the fresh basil in the dish. And there's nothing better than um, when you have a plate put in front of you and you can see the fresh basil and then um, on top of that, just go ahead and taste it. It just blows you away. Okay, chop basil. All right, so next uh, we're going to get our tomato and chop the tomato up. So I have a big chunk here, it's a big wedge, I just wanted to show you. One thing I'm going to do is just, uh, I'm going to squeeze that tomato, and I just want to get some of those seeds out of there. All right, see how that got all those seeds out? One little, just one quick squeeze. All right, and this one, it's more of a uh, garniture for the sauce. So I'm not going to peel it, I'm going to keep some of that peel intact. But all those seeds, I really don't need those, so I'm just going to get rid of those. Alright, so then I'm going to take my knife, and I want these to be a little bit on the larger side also. Alright, and we're just going to dice this up. Alright, and I'm looking for uniformity, I'm not looking for any um, uh, award ceremonies here, but I just julienned, I'm going to cut the other way now. And we got a nice, even dice, okay? 
and that's going to just go unbelievable when we saute that shrimp and the garlic and the fresh basil it's just going to be beautiful okay let's do that again so as i did cut into strips basically turn it cut it again and voila instant diced tomato okay all right Okay, so when I work with fresh chicken, if you've seen some of my other videos, I don't like the chicken to touch the cutting board. I'm just kind of, you know, call me a freak or whatever about cross-contamination, but one little trick that I learned a long, long time ago is to go ahead and spread out some plastic wrap on top of your cutting board. Now what this does, uh, this will keep the actual raw chicken from touching your cutting board and at all times, you know, it's nothing, nothing helps better than being overly protective when it comes to cross contamination. So all I did, I put a little bit of water down on the cutting board, I spread that plastic wrap out, look at that, instant barrier on top of the cutting board. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pound the chicken breasts, all right, and I've got two beautiful huge chicken breasts here, and I'm going to just trim these up just a little bit to just get some of that fat off. And uh, just kind of be careful, you know, you don't want to uh, cut the plastic wrap at all costs if you can help it. And we're just going to trim. I like to trim this little area off right here. Okay, get a little trim. Okay, trim that little bit right off there. Okay. All right, so now we're going to lay out the chicken breast. And one more time, we're going to go ahead. And we're going to put a little bit more plastic wrap on top now. Okay, I'm going to cover this up again with a little bit more plastic wrap. Alright, and as you can see, now it's going to make things easier to pound it. And it's going to just uh, help the whole process go a little smoother, a little cleaner, a little neater. All right, now I'm using a meat mallet here. You know, many of you might say, oh my God, I don't have a meat mallet. Not a problem. You can use a bottom of a saute pan. I've used, I've used tin cans, soup cans. You know, it doesn't matter. And all I'm doing is pounding this out just a little bit for a number of reasons. This is gonna help the cooking process. It's gonna allow it to cook even and it's going to allow it to cook faster. All right, so the idea is not to, to mash it out so that we have to tenderize it. It's just to get a little bit flat, and we're going to try to make it as even as possible. All right, there we have our pounded chicken breast. And I'm going to put these on a plate for later. And there's our chicken breast. Now I can go ahead and just fold these over. And boom, nice clean cutting wood. Never touch with raw product. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our breading together for it. So for that, all we need is our egg. Uh, and it, we're not going to do a whole lot. So one egg should be more than enough. Okay. And I'm going to get a wire whisk and just a little touch of milk. And you don't need a little bit, about 50-50. Okay. And let's just go ahead and whisk that together. Now this creates your uh, egg wash. So what we do, we flour the product first. Then we egg wash it, then we stick it in the breadcrumbs. All right. See how that looks? Nice and whipped together. All right. All right, so I've got the pounded chicken breast here. And as you can see, these chicken breasts, now that I pounded them, uh, they're huge. So I want to go ahead and cut those a little bit, cut them right in half. And, you know, I was always, um, when I grew up, and we had dinner, family dinners around the table. You could always take more. So, you know, you don't have to have this gigantic piece of chicken on your plate 
that you're probably not going to finish anyway. So it's better to have a couple smaller portions and you can always go back for more. All right. So all I did is cut that into four pieces and we're going to be good to go. So next thing, we're going to get the flour ready. All right, so now we've got the chicken all set up. We've got the flour, egg wash, and breadcrumbs, and I also have a plate sitting right here. What I'm gonna do is put a little bit of the breadcrumbs on the plate, and that's gonna keep the, the product from actually sticking to the plate, and it's gonna uh, keep that bread or, you know, nice and um, uh, dry as well. So the first thing I try to do, and I mentioned it before in the previous videos, is to have one hand wet, one hand dry, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and take my wet hand and that's going to tuck the product into the flour first. Now the procedure is pretty simple. It's flour, sticks to the chicken, you're going to put that into the wet egg wash. The egg wash sticks to the flour in my wet hand. Alright, let all that egg drain off, put it right into the breadcrumbs, put a little bit on top, turn it over. I like to pat it down. Okay, shake off the excess. And you want to make sure the whole chicken breast is covered with the breading. Okay, there's nothing worse than when you're frying it in a pan and there's a little area that doesn't have the breading on top and you can see the meat, the chicken in it. Okay, so look at that, nice. All right, same process. I have a wet hand and a dry hand, it just keeps your hands cleaner. So the wet hand picks it up, drops it in the flour. All right, dry hand puts it in the wet. Wet hand comes over, picks it out of the egg wash, dips it, drips it, and put that right down. And we can go a little faster now. Wet hand picks up the chicken, puts it in the flour. All right. And there's no special way of doing this. There's no secrets. It's real pretty simple. This is a standard breading procedure is what we're doing here. Anytime you use flour, egg wash, breadcrumb, that's called a standard breading procedure. And this chicken breast, uh, you can see it separate a little bit. Not a problem. Put that right inside. And put that right back into shape again. Okay. Pat that down. With my dry hand. And we try to keep our hand dry. It doesn't always work out that way. Okay. Look at that. It's getting nice and coated. All right, put that over to the plate. So what I did, I just put a little bit more breadcrumb in the bowl here. And uh, anybody that knows me also, I do not like to waste anything. There is, waste is intolerable to me. So you can always add more breadcrumbs. All right, shake it up. All right, one more time. Got the wet hand in the dry flour. Dry flour, turn it over. And make sure it gets coated really well, same thing. The flour's gotta be on every part of that chicken breast because every part of that chicken breast that's coated with flour is gonna now be coated with egg. All right, now that it's coated with egg, we're gonna let the excess drip off. and into the breadcrumbs. Shake that. I also sometimes use a, a Ziploc bag and I take the breadcrumbs and put them right into the bag and then I just kind of shake it up, literally. Back in the day they used to have a, uh, a commercial about shake and bake and uh, call it what you want, but it sure does work, all right? So now I'm also gonna put a little bit more breadcrumbs on top of all that. And there we have it, we have got our breaded chicken cutlets that are ready to go into the hot pan and I'm going to set those aside. Okay so now we're going to get cooking our chicken cutlets and just like all my other videos first thing we do before we do any cooking is get the pans hot and this pan is hot so you can see 
I'm going to put a little oil in it, and that oil just dances all around in the pan. Now this is, that was extra virgin olive oil. Now when I cook chicken cutlets, that extra virgin olive oil is just a little bit, uh, just a little bit too heavy. So I like to cut it, and what I'm doing is mixing that about 50-50 with a um, trans fat free vegetable oil or canola oil. You can use whatever you like. All right, I'm going to add that to the pan and get that hot. And now I've got my chicken cutlets here. One way you can test it is to put a little bit of the breadcrumbs in. See those sizzle? You know your pan is hot. Okay? I like to take them and circle them around in the pan. Shake it. Same thing. Let's get it in the hot oil. Shake it. And I keep that hot oil moving all around in the pan all right, at all times. Now you can see it's already just cooking away. So I'm going to cut the heat back to about medium. All right. And I, I like to keep the oil moving in the pan. So I want to make sure that I'm coating the entire chicken breast. All right. This is going to cook very quickly. So because we pounded them out, this is going to cook nice and evenly, also nice and quickly, and nice and crispy. All right. This is smelling so good with that Italian breadcrumbs. Keep it moving, keep it moving. A little bit more, another second. I like them brown, but not too brown. And you can take it off the fire. And we flipped it over. Look at that beautiful, unbelievably brown, crispy, crusty chicken breast. Can you see that? Hot pan, hot oil. Notice how quick that cooked. All right. You can also see that little bit of white that's coming out. That's what is called really the blood of the chicken is coming out. You know that chicken is cooking when you see that starting to get extracted. All right. Look at that. It smells unbelievable. And again, I like to, whenever I cook anything in hot oil, I like to keep it lifted up and make sure the oil is underneath of it. So number one, it, it evenly cooks the chicken breast or whatever it is that you're cooking as well as keeping it from sticking in the pan. All right? Now this didn't take any time at all. So what I'm going to do is just finish browning the sides, the bottom sides. You can see it's browning up real nice. And this, now that you have chicken cutlets, there's so many different variations of what you can do with this. You can just take it just like it is. I like to squeeze a little bit of fresh lemon on top. You could take a little bit of tomato sauce and some melted cheese on top. Instant chicken parmesan. All right, so now that I got that nice and brown, I'm gonna transfer that to a pan, which I've already lined with a little bit of uh, paper towel. So I like to kind of get as much of that oil off as I can. I'm gonna turn that, the stove off. Gonna let that drain for a second on the paper towel. Now, this fresh, this hot oil is very, very hot, so you got to be careful. So I'm going to pull this off the stove for now. All right. So next up, we've taken the chicken cutlet out of the oven. It's nice and hot. What we're going to do is top it off with a little bit of tomato sauce, which I previously made, and. You can, again, you can make batches of your tomato sauce ahead of time. Uh, it's okay to cheat. You can make, buy a little store bought uh, tomato sauce. You know, cooking class with the working class is all about, you know, speed and us getting a nice nutritious dinner, but without very little uh, time involved. So, I'll take a little bit of that chunky sauce that I made. You can see the chunks of tomato coming out there. I'm just gonna coat that chicken breast. Now, controversial, what kind of cheese do we use, Chef John, for our chicken parmesan? Answer, any kind you like. I personally like to use provolone cheese. I like that smokiness, I buy a smoky uh, provolone cheese. So, you can use shredded mozzarella, and you can, we can go back and forth and argue this for 100 years, but it's all about your preference, okay? So, I'm going to put a little bit of that parmesan, or that provolone cheese right on top. All right, provolone goes a long way. So um, now we're going to take this and we're going to pop this into the toaster oven 
and when we come back, we're going to start plating up. Okay, so we got our hot water going here, so now I'm just going to take that portion of pasta, dip it into the little basket. It's a stainless steel strainer, actually. And let that soak for just a second. That water's boiling. That's going to bring that, that pasta right back to temperature. And next up, we're going to put this on a plate, and it's going to be unbelievable. Okay, so now is the fun part. We're going to plate up this chicken cutlet parmesan with a little bit of angel hair pasta. So I'm going to take that little ball of pasta, make a little bit of mound. Not quite the center of the plate, a little off to the side of the plate. Okay. Now we're going to take a little bit of red sauce. This is a chunky tomato sauce that I've previously made. So you can see the chunks of tomato and basil in there. I'm going to put a little bit of that sauce on top of that pasta. Okay. Sauce is like anything else, how much you like. Now we're going to take that beautiful chicken parmesan. Uh, we, it's a breaded chicken cutlet with the Italian panko breadcrumbs, a little bit of tomato sauce, and some uh, smoked provolone cheese. That's going to go right over the top of that. Okay, the mound of the pasta helps to give a little bit of elevation to the plate. And I like to put uh, just a little bit more sauce, kind of wherever it needs it. We're going to garnish the plate with it a little bit. Be generous. Again, it's all about your preference. Now, I've got a little bit of uh, shaved Reggiana Parmesan cheese, which I like to put a little sprinkle of that. All right, now, earlier we made a chiffon out of the fresh basil. That's the basil strings. Or the little spaghetti basil, also it's called. Now we're going to put a little bit of that on the plate wherever it needs it. A little bit of a mound right there. Okay. And then lastly, we've got a beautiful fresh basil spring right from the garden. Thank God my wife can grow basil. She can grow just about anything. So we're going to show this plate off with a nice Fresh piece of basil garnish. I'm going to wipe the plate. And there we have it. Breaded breast chicken parmesan, angel hair pasta, shaved Reggiano parmesan cheese. So there we have it, folks. We've got our Italian breaded chicken cutlet tomato and basil marinara sauce served over angel hair pasta. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like it, please don't forget to click the thumbs up sign and give me a like. And also subscribe to my channel and you can see uh, previews of premieres and upcoming events that are happening. Okay? So until then, eat well, be well. God bless America.